What's going on everybody? My name is Bob from Aesthetic Imprints and today I got a little something special right here and I wanted to open this live on video for you all. So as you can see, this thing is still sealed. It came last week, but I wanted to go ahead and open it with you all. So let's go ahead and open this. Probably like what, I wonder what it is. Well, from the title of the video, you probably already know. So this is actually the Gen 2 Hoopmaster system for the embroidery machine to hoop hats and just hoop in a better way, supposedly. I think it'll be a better way and more efficient way and it's just gonna be a lot more stable. So I'm here to show you guys and bring you guys the content on whether it actually makes a difference or not. So let's go ahead and unbox it. Got this paper. This is probably one of the hoops. and then I had to go ahead and actually get the clamp system to go ahead and be able to hoop it because I can't use the regular hooping system I got so this is basically like an all-new hooping system for the embroidery machine and this is well built it's got some weight to it okay and these are the hoops so these aren't like your traditional hoops. These are a lot. You could you could actually embroider a lot bigger with these, but I'm opening this right with you guys. So I'm learning right with you guys. So bear with me as I figure this out. But basically open it like that and then it hoops. Let me show you the difference. Versus these standard hoops where the hat comes on here and then you use this little thing and wrap it around. This one has like a whole thing to clamp that hat down and hold it in registration. Cause let's face it, one of the biggest issues I have with embroidering hats and just doing embroidery on hats and structured hats, dad hats is loss of registration. I always get loss of registration. That's because the hat starts to move or it's something but I wanted to go ahead and put the test to this Gen 2 hooping system and see if it actually fixes my problems versus this one strap holding the hat down to now this whole thing holding the hat down. Put this back. But that's not all. I actually got something else. This is for the back inside of the cap because we all know that's another issue Hooping the side of the hat with that thing is already another issue. Um, it's not really an issue, it's possible, it's doable, but I like to have something that I can rely on that is gonna be efficient and work properly. So, I got these bad boys as well. This is for the side of the hat and it can also be used for the back of the hat. So these are basically just clamps. Let's see, how do you open this? So it just clamps onto the hat and then I lock it down into place for the side or the back of the hat. So let's see how this stuff works. All right, everybody. I feel like I kind of got this figured out. I messed with it a little bit behind the scenes to see how it actually works. Now, remember, this is actually the old hooping system. This is the traditional hooping system that everyone uses. And this is the Gen 2 hooping system. Um, and these are the hoops for it. So basically, how you get it on there is... You gotta tilt it a little bit and send it in through those holes right there and then bring it down and that's good to go. And then this is basically the center mark. Now, now the good thing about this hooping system is it has these clips to hold your backing versus this one, it really doesn't have anything to hold your backing. So now with this one, I just insert my backing right there and insert my other side of the backing right there and it's good to go and it's just gonna hold that backing right there while I hoop versus this one. When I go to hoop and it's a big backing, the backing always moves because there's nothing really to hold it. Now this bottom is what's gonna hold this, but you go ahead and do the front first. So I'm gonna insert the hat on there. Keep in mind, I just got this thing, so I'm not a professional, but um, I'm trying to show you guys as best as I can. Now that it's on there, what I do is bring this up and try to feed the bottom of the hat through there. And it's a little tight, but there we go. And as you can see, the hat shifted a little bit, so I'm just gonna center that out using my center mark right there. Center it out. 
and make sure everything is good. Now, this is really cool because I could just push this down. As you can see, it stretches out the hat and makes it all smooth. And then I bring this thing over and clip it in and boom, it's done. Just like that, it's all done and it's all on there. Tight, as you can see, it's a way bigger field. All right, now just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys me hooping with the regular hooping system. Now the regular hooping system has this right here, but there's nothing to hold the paper, I mean the backing, so it can just move. So I try to hoop this one. This is the traditional way to hoop. Feed it right at the bottom, it slips, but you feed the hat through, feed the sweatband in there, and then make sure it's in there. All right, now that it's in there, with this one, you gotta get this thing and wrap it around. And then clip it here on the bottom. And as you can see, with this one, when you go to tighten it, the hat moves. So you gotta make sure it's centered and then that's done. So this versus this one. As you can see, that's the side by side difference. I'm not even, Bob, not even showing them. All right, there it is now. As you can see, this is a traditional hooping system and this is the new Gen 2 hooping system. So. You guys saw the side by side and how it works and what it looks like. All right, you guys, now the next thing I got is this, which is for the back of the hats and the side of the hats. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. So I go ahead and load it up, same way, get those hoops in there. And this thing, again, it has the clips to hold the backing, which makes it so much easier. And it's just, it's just such a convenient feature to have that. So I have that in there. And now let's do a dad hat. We all know these Velcro or the snapback style hats. So you load it up from one side, get it on there. Now the back of hats can get difficult, but you could do it on a flat, but check this thing out. I mean, it makes it so much easier. It has these little edges right here for the center mark. So I'll just line that up to the seam, get it on there, lock that down, and then just pull away those wrinkles. And as you can see, it's as easy as that. And now I have a flat area to hoop um, and embroider on the back of this hat. And if that wasn't enough, here's my second one. I'm gonna, let's say you wanted to embroider on the side of the hat, the back clamp can actually do the same thing for the side. So I'm just gonna put this, pull the sweatband out, load the hat in here. Make sure the sweatband is not still behind it. Go ahead and flatten it out. Boom. Lock that in. Pull these wrinkles out. And just like that, we got this beautiful area to embroider on the side. As easy as that. That was not the backing. Don't worry. This was just the extra backing that was in there. I pull out. I forgot to pull out, but side embroidery. Wow. And there you guys have it. I wanted to make sure I take you guys along with me embroidering all these different hats in the different ways that it does happen. Now here is the traditional way to embroider a hat with the little loop-de-loop -loop around it. And yeah, so you could do that. But if you want to embroider on the side, you got to do the same thing, but make sure your hooping on the side is right. And to do the back, you could use something else like a flat. But here is the Gen 2 hooping system, as you can see. Check that out, it's on there. And I feel like it's a little more stronger. That's what it's supposed to be, but we'll put it to the test and figure that out. And of course, my favorite of all is this little hooping system to hoop the back as easy as it is. Check that out, that's such a flat job as well. It'll be easy to do that. And then the middle lines just make it even better because now you know you're gonna be in the center. And uh, the other best part is the side embroidery. As you can see, that's such a flat, nice way to do it. Before, it would be stressful to embroider or do an embroidery on the side with this because it's just, it doesn't hold it as good and it doesn't get as flat. But this, this gets super flat. Now I could embroider the side with confidence. Before, 
it was a little iffy, you know, when those type of orders come in, I'm like, is that possible? But now investing in a system like this, I don't see why it wouldn't be possible as efficient and as sturdy as it gets. A trace. Looks good. And don't worry, this time lapse won't last long because we ran into an issue. Something went wrong. Let's see. All right, everybody, I'm gonna keep it real. The first run did not go really too well. As you can see, something happened and it just jumped and made an extra line right here, zigzag right there. And then the circle went well. It's a little off registration here. I thought it was supposed to be more registration with a hoop like this, but I guess it's having issues. I don't know if it was the hoop itself that was having issues or it was something along the lines with the machine and just hooping right there. So I'm gonna put it to the test and see how it does with the regular traditional hooping system for the hat and then the Gen 2 right side by side. So let's see how this goes. Just trace it, make sure everything is good. Yep. And let's see. That looks much better. For some reason, I feel like just on the first one, it kind of glitched out and jumped, and that's why it caused that. Because on these, both of them look perfectly fine. Let's fingers crossed. Man, I haven't really seen embroidery in time lapse, but man, looking at it now, look at that needle. It's like this thing is moving as fast as speed, but the needle looks slow mo. It's it's kind of crazy. It looks cool though. Now this one's the new Gen 2 and this is the traditional and they both look like they did pretty darn good. I think the first run was some glitch happened with the machine, which is probably normal. I mean, it just jump stitched and something messed up. But as you can see, these new ones turned out fire. Both of them look great. Um, and yeah, I can't really tell a big difference between the two. They both turned out clean. It's been a few hours and I'm still here messing with this thing and it's not going the best. I don't know if it's the hoop's fault because I've used the standard hoop as well, but let me show you exactly what's going on. So this design keeps just bouncing way off registration. As you can see, it's supposed to be a circle following this, but as you can see, it just shifts its way to the left. Same exact thing on this one. People say it's the hat brim touching, but I mean, there's nowhere where it's touching. So I don't really know what's going on here. It's it's kind of annoying. I've messed up so many hats because of this. It's getting irritating. And to be real, I messed up at least a dozen or so hats doing this job and trying to figure out what the best uh, hooping system is. But it's all a part of the process because if you're not messing things up, you're not learning. So. I take it all as a lesson and just getting better at it every day. This is just me testing it out, seeing what the best option out there is for hooping hats and getting the best embroidery and me just publicly sharing it, the good and the bad. There it is, everybody. We got the hats all done. They're all embroidered and came out clean. I got the runner. It was a small runner, just 25 hats, but I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. This whole entire batch right here is all screw ups. As you guys saw, I showed you guys a little bit, but this one just kept jumping out of stitch. This one looks perfectly fine. Like I could let this one go, but 
you know, the per imperf the perfectionist in me. If you look closely, I don't even know if it's catching this, but there's a there's like a thread that just jumped out of stitch on the outline. I don't even think you can see it. There it is. You can see it right there. Other than that, this hat is good, but since I saw that, that's definitely a no-go. Same exact thing with this one. Everything is good, but that black stitch outline and then these just jumped out of place. I don't know what the issue was with that, but whatever. We, we ruined a batch of hats. It's all good. It's all a learning process, and I'm keeping it real with y'all. I don't know if it was the hoop. I don't know what was the issue because sometimes it messed up with the new Gen 2 hoop. Sometimes it messed up with the traditional. But if I'm being honest, I just went ahead and did a majority of these on the traditional hoop and not the Gen 2 hoop because when I went ahead and did it again, this jump stitch happened and I, I don't want that happening. So I wanted to make sure I get all of their hats done perfectly and they are now. But we messed up. A lot of hats on the way it's all good though i'm not sold on the gen 2 yet um and honestly it's not a cheap um hoop i think it was like 350 dollars for one of them so it was about seven eight hundred and then you got to get like the little thing to hoop it on so it's like a grand at least 1200 probably um the side and back frame that's definitely a game changer i like that but I don't know, I still gotta mess around with it. So if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see future updates on this process, just go ahead and subscribe, like this video. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Always remember no grind, no glory. And if you wanna see screen print and other content, go ahead and check out my videos on this YouTube channel and go ahead and reach out to me at Aesthetic Imprints if you have any questions or need custom apparel printed. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Peace.